Brian speak about some of the challenges the publishers face of monetizing their inventory in an ecosystem full of closed intermediaries. Now, I want to talk about a very different problem, but one that we're going to see is surprisingly related to what Brian spoke about. That is, why the heck do banner ads still exist in mobile? Now, it's no secret that the banner format has been under attack for quite some time. It seems like every, every month, Somebody influential launches a new tweet storm talking about how the banner format is holding back the internet. It's been called misguided, it's been called destructive, like a prank that was played by the technology industry on the media industry 20 years ago. Pretty, pretty serious stuff here. It seems like mobile publishers especially dislike the banner ad format. LinkedIn and Yelp have both very publicly made moves to remove banner advertising from their sites and apps because they, they believe that native advertising offers a far superior user experience to their users. And they've even done this at the expense of short-term revenue. I think my favorite quote of all is actually from Dave Jacobowski at Facebook, who says, quote, the mobile banner might be the worst ad since the pop-up. We killed that thing because it was awful. The mobile banner is just as bad. Wow, I mean, that's pretty inflammatory language. And while I think that quote might be a tad bit exaggerated, I think it's indicative of the consensus growing among mobile publishers that native advertising offers a superior user experience to the banner ad. And yet, outside of the Facebooks of the world, I still seem to see banner ads everywhere I look. I mean, they're on every major app, virtually every major news site on the internet. And native advertising, which everybody seems to agree is the better user experience and the better format, is still a relatively small portion of the overall display ecosystem outside of Facebook. So why is this? I mean, really, why is it that banner ads haven't long been replaced? We've had years to do this already. I'd like to challenge all of you in the audience today to help me answer this question. And I want to do a quick interactive poll here. And here's how it's going to work. For the one person who doesn't already have their phone out, go ahead and, and take out your phone and uh, go ahead and text the word pub summit. That's one word to the number 22333. You're gonna get prompted, and we have four different responses you can choose from. And we're gonna go through them one by one. We'll pull up the interactive poll in a second here. So let's, let's start it. So number one, so go ahead and text it in. Who thinks that publishers are to blame? That publishers haven't gotten their act together to update their sites and apps to accommodate new formats. Number two, who thinks it's the fault of the ad tech ecosystem? that all the DSPs, SSPs, ad servers of the world haven't gotten their act together to update the technology to support new ad formats. Number three, who thinks it's the fault of the, the marketers and agencies? It's actually the advertisers who are to blame. Do they secretly love banner advertising, or are they unwilling to make the, the leap to new ad formats? OK, so we have, we have answers coming in here. It looks like most of the crowd seems to think it's the fault of of the advertisers, of the marketers and agencies. Some people think it's uh, the fault of the ad tech ecosystem. I think third place is it's the fault of the publishers. Not surprising, because most of the people in the crowd are publishers. <laughs> there are few people who think there's a different answer here. But I, I think the answers are, for the most part, fairly scattered. There's not a unanimous answer. And I think this is a hard problem to answer. But when I started thinking about it, I began to realize that there's really one thing that ties all the answers together, and that's that it's all about the supply chain. You heard Brian speak a little bit about this, but let me explain what I mean by this. Now, we've spent the last decade as an industry, all of us in the room have been involved in this, we've spent billions of dollars building one of the most complex and sophisticated supply chains that's ever existed. I mean, it really is amazing that in 60 milliseconds or less, we can value any ad impression, we can match the exact right ad from millions of different ads, to, to the right user. I mean, nothing like this has ever existed really in, in history before. But the supply chain, which I call the open ecosystem, is fairly complex. There are many different hops required for an ad to get from an advertiser or marketer all the way through to a publisher. And this has created a lot of complexity. But I think this open ecosystem has evolved to be this way for good reasons. I think that there are four fundamental attributes of the open ecosystem 
that really make it, that really justify a lot of the complexity. And those are, first, it's guaranteed to be fair. So you know that if you tap into this open ecosystem, you're running a fair auction, you're probably going to maximize the amount of competition and get a fair price for your inventory. Second, it maximizes control. Publishers have ultimate control over how they allocate their inventory, and buyers have ultimate control over which impressions they choose to target and how much they pay. Third, it's a modular supply chain. So you can plug in different technologies to, serve, to solve different problems. You can replace your viewability vendor with another one, your attribution, your DSP, SSP, ad server, verification. All these different parts of the, of the ecosystem are all pluggable. And last, it's a relatively transparent supply chain. The fact that publishers and advertisers alike have visibility down to the impression level for each financial transaction is actually pretty amazing. At this point, take rates are relatively transparent in the open ecosystem. And yet, for all these benefits, the open ecosystem has one major shortcoming, and that's that it's been very slow to adapt to new formats, even when new formats seem to be justified in the value that they add both to publishers and to marketers. And I believe that the key reason for this is the number of hops involved in the supply chain. So we saw earlier that giant diagram of the supply chain. Each one of those hops is effectively a different intermediary that has to update its processes and its systems to accommodate new formats. And that creates a lot of inertia for change. It means that if you're a publisher, you're probably going to think twice before making the leap to a new format if the rest of the ecosystem hasn't caught up yet. And likewise, if you're an advertiser or marketer or agency, you're going to think twice about investing in new formats if there, are, if there isn't already a well-established supply chain in a liquid market for those new formats. And I believe this is the fundamental reason why the open ecosystem has very, been very slow to adapt to native formats and new types of formats. So does this mean that we're stuck for the next 20 years with the banner format? Well, I don't, I don't think so. I think that the open ecosystem is going to catch up. We're already starting to see this with new technologies, new open RTB standards that, that account for native, many new players entering this open ecosystem to specialize in, in native technologies. I think it's starting to evolve, but this is going to take a number of years and is a massive undertaking. But I want to talk about one shortcut that some publishers seem to be taking. I think this is incredibly important to understand. In order to do this, I'd like to use an example of a publisher that's been phenomenally successful at driving adoption of new formats. So I think we can all agree that Facebook is the poster child of a publisher that has been very successful at introducing new formats. And the reason for this is that Facebook has been able to develop a completely independent supply chain from the open ecosystem. I call it the closed, an example of a closed ecosystem. The reason they've been able to do this is that Facebook, very early on, was branded as a separate media channel, as social media, versus display advertising. So marketers and agencies developed entirely different processes, in many cases as different teams of people, focused on social buying or on buying basically Facebook media. And this has resulted in a very simple supply chain. It's a much simpler problem. If Facebook wants to introduce a new format, they merely need to convince agencies and marketers that the new formats add value, which they, they clearly do, and then they need to update their internal systems to account for those new formats. Much, much easier. Two hops versus the 15 plus hops that we saw with the supply chain behind the open ecosystem. And this begins to have very large implications for the rest of the publishing ecosystem. As Facebook and other closed ecosystems like Twitter and Google have begun opening up their supply chains, which are really separate parallel supply chains, to other publishers. Facebook has done this with their, their audience network, for instance. And this means that publishers now potentially have a shortcut, a shorter path to access and tap into this large pool of native demand. And this is, for the most part, a positive thing. It's a good thing for publishers but also comes with some very significant risks. And I think, believe that many publishers don't necessarily realize that these risks exist. I think the key risk is that 
Over-dependence on closed ecosystems means that you lose all of the benefits, and we may lose all those benefits as an industry of the open ecosystem. Remember, we talked about fairness, transparency, control, and modularity. You get none of that when you tap into a closed ecosystem. So it's very important that we need to be careful as an industry about relying too heavily on these closed ecosystems at the expense of the open ecosystem. And if there's one message to take away from this presentation, it's that if you're a publisher and you're planning a migration to native formats or away from banner formats, it's incredibly important to maintain a path to the open ecosystem as you do so. There are many different strategies and different solutions that you can use to do this. I believe that you can take many different paths. At AppNexus, we've introduced our solution to this problem. We call it mobile price check. You heard Brian speak a little bit about this, but it's a very, very simple concept. Effectively, it's a snippet of code that you can insert, you can embed it into any app or any website. You can ping us for any ad impression, and we'll return back a fair price. We believe it's a fair price as determined by the open ecosystem. And we'll, we'll even offer to pay that price for an ad impression. What this allows is effectively a simple way to keep closed ecosystems in check. You now have a price point at which to value that individual impression. And again, we don't believe that this is the only solution. There are many other solutions, and there are other companies now offering header bidding solutions in mobile. We're very sort of excited about what we see, and we encourage other companies to do the same. So, wrapping this up and tying this all back together, we started by asking the question, WTF, why are there still banner ads in mobile? If everybody seems to agree that native advertising offers a superior experience, why hasn't the whole industry and whole eco publishing ecosystem already moved to these new formats? And we said a lot of this has to do with the complexity of the, this massive, massively complex supply chain that we built. And the supply chain, which we call the open ecosystem, has some really great advantages to it. It's evolved to be complex, but it's evolved for good reasons. Publishers can shortcut this path, in many cases, by working with closed ecosystems, like the Facebooks and Googles of the world, but you do so potentially at the expense of losing the benefits of, of an open ecosystem. And there's one piece of parting wisdom, it's that if you are planning a move to native formats, do so carefully while retaining a path to the open ecosystem, as this could have powerful implications on how the industry evolves over the next few years. Thank you.